from a grateful pastor. To all the saints at Pinehurst United Methodist Church, grace and peace to you. In the name of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. On May 23rd, 2012, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, my life changed forever when my cell phone rang. David, the voice on the other end of the line, said, This is Bishop Al Gwynn. I have something I need you to pray about. It's a, it's a unique opportunity. Now, when I heard the bishop's voice, I was terrified. And the fact he wanted to give me a unique opportunity did not make me feel any better. In my experience, unique opportunities are not all they're cracked up to be. I mean, Daniel had a unique opportunity with a lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had a unique opportunity with a fiery furnace. Uh, In my experience, the words unique opportunity are often code for, quote, you probably don't want to do this. But he continued. David, he said, There's a church over in Moore County that's going to need a pastor this June. And the district superintendents and I have been talking about it and praying about it, and we think God might be calling you to go and serve there. So David, this is what I want you to do. I want you to call your wife, and I want the two of you to pray about it. I want you to really pray about it. And then call me back in an hour and let me know what you think. And so began the greatest nine years of my life. Now, I should be clear, even after learning I would be moving to Pinehurst and serving at Pinehurst United Methodist Church, I in no way felt good about the situation. Given my age and experience level, the whole idea just seemed insane to me. However, what the bishop did not tell me that day on the phone is that you guys, you were desperate. I mean, really desperate. Later, I would find out that PUMC had pretty much run out of pastoral options, and the only choice you had was either me or no pastor at all. And so we were stuck with each other. An arranged marriage that God joined together so that no one might set us asunder. Now, how do you begin to describe nine years of life and faith together in a single letter? Where do you even start? What do you talk about? Should you talk about the good times you've had together as a church? <laughs> like when we rented the fair barn for Christmas Eve and we were totally shocked when people actually showed up? Or how the entire church smelled like fudge for weeks after the chocolate festival, even though we sold every last box? Is there room in a letter like this for the hard times? Like when John died, and our hearts were broke into a thousand pieces. Or when we had to say goodbye to the Cashins, or the Stewarts, or the Thomases, even though we knew, we knew moving was the right decision for them. Do you write a letter like this and talk about all the funny things that happened for nine years? Like that Sunday when Tracy fell asleep during my sermon and she began to snore during church? Or the time when Thomas set off the fire alarm because he forgot his key and he tried to sneak in the church through the window? Do I even mention the time in the 815 service where I stood up to give the benediction and I raised my hands and I said to the congregation, quote, Now go forth and let God's light shine through your cracks. (laughs) And as soon as the words came out, I instantly regretted them. Is there a space in a letter like this to talk about all the ridiculous things we live through together? Like those six months when we were fighting about where to put that beautiful fire hazard of a round table in the narthex. And when we couldn't decide on where it should go, we just put the whole thing on sliders so it could move back and forth and we could finally end the conversation. How do you describe 
55 baptisms, 66 funerals, 31 births, 76 deaths, 367 new members, and 92 members who were called somewhere else in a single letter. Where do you start? You know, a church member by the name of Andy Fox once told me whenever I preached a sermon, I only had three distinct messages I would ever deliver. He called them my look up, look down, and look all around sermons. Andy said that every scripture, every illustration, every nuanced biblical interpretation I gave could be reduced to one of those three themes. And of course, he's right. The entirety of the gospel comes back to those three simple messages. Look up. Look down. Look all around. So, Pine Arch and I am at this church on this, my final Sunday with you. May these be my parting words. Look up. When life gets hard, I want you to look up. Look to the one who gives strength to the weary and hope to the hopeless. Because I promise you this, the worst thing that happens in your life, it will never be the last thing. I promise that weeping, it may last for the night, but joy, it will come in the morning. So look up. Because after every Good Friday, there is an Easter Sunday. Beyond every cross, there is an empty tomb and a God waiting to make all things new. Yes, the pain we experience in this life, it is real, and sometimes it crushes us. But the promises of God, those are eternal. So look up when the diagnosis comes. Look up when the jobs get restructured. Look up when the family you love begins to pull apart at the seams. Cast your eyes upon the hills because that is where your help comes from. It comes from the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth, and God will get you through this if you keep looking up. So look up and rely on his strength. And after you look up, I want you to look down. Why down? Well, it's because Jesus said the kingdom of God, it is all around you. The kingdom of God, he said, it is within you. You see, the kingdom, it's never been a future reality. It's never been a distant hope. Jesus said the kingdom is here. It is right now. It is in our very midst. So look down. Because you don't have to wait to experience joy in your life. Joy is available to you today. The only thing you need to do to experience it is simply slow down and pay attention. So look down in the middle of the committee meeting and look down at family dinner at night and look down when the azaleas start to bloom or when the pine trees drop their cones. Look down because this, this is the kingdom of God. It is right here. It is right now. It is the leaven that has been smuggled into everyday life. It is that mustard seed that when nurtured, it will grow into a mighty shrub. Never forget the holy moment in your life, the sacred moment, it is the present moment. It is your very breath right here, right now. So look down and pay attention. Because I don't want you to miss it. The kingdom, it is right here and right now. And after you get done looking up, And after you get done looking down, I want you to look all around. Because God never asked anyone to make it through this life on their own. Instead, God gave us a church. God gave us brothers and sisters who promised to be with us through thick and thin, saints that will walk alongside us and give us their faith when our faith runs dry. Never forget, Abraham had Sarah. In Moses, he had Aaron, and Ruth had Naomi, and David had Jonathan, and Jesus had the twelve, and I have you. And you have me, and we have each other. Just look around. We have each other. See, Pinehurst and I at this church, it's never been about a person or a pastor. Pinehurst and I at this church, it's always been about us. It's been about a community of faith beautiful and broken people who are limping together towards God's finish line. So 
to look around if you ever feel alone. And look around if you think that no one cares about what you're going through. And look around and know that if we are going to have faith at all in this life, we are going to have faith together. It's Piner Schneider Methodist Church. I thank my God every time I remember you. Because I am constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel with me from this first day until now. And I'm confident of this. I'm confident that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. David Bishop Gwynn said, I need you to pray about something. There's a church in Moore County that needs a pastor. Yes, these past nine years have been my greatest honor. It has been my unique opportunity to be your pastor. And for that opportunity, I am eternally grateful. Your steadfast presence in my life, it has made my joy complete. And even though this season we have shared together is coming to an end, and even though I will no longer be around to celebrate baptisms and funerals and weddings with you as your pastor, I count it a true privilege, the highest honor, to call you friend. And as your friend, this is my prayer for you today. I pray that your love may overflow more and more with the knowledge and full insight of God to help you determine what is best so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced a harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and the praise of God. Look up. Look down. And look all around, because this, what's the kingdom of God? Yes, thanks be to God. And amen.